What's going on guys? Welcome back to another flag tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying this quill body Euro style nymph on a jig hook. So I'm going to get a fresh hook in the vise and we'll get going with this tutorial. So the hook we have in the vise right now and my preferred hook I like to use for my Euro style nymphs if they're going to be on a jig is this Patriot barbless jig hook. This is a number 14. The bead I have on there is a tungsten bead, uh, black nickel, and this is in a 1 8 diameter as well as I have a couple wraps of this lead-free 0.15 uh, lead-free wire. Also, I put a little dab of this LePage Ultra Gel um, Super Glue, and that just kind of holds that uh, lead-free wire up behind the bead so it doesn't go anywhere. So the third we're gonna be using is some UTC 70 denier. This is just in a black color. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my thread right behind this lead, put some thread wraps up on this lead, so I know it's not going to go anywhere. Then I'm going to come in and just cut out my little tag end here. And then we're just going to take some wraps down the shank a bit. And we're going to end our thread right about where the hook barb would be if there was a barb on this hook. So the, the tailing material that I like to use on all my Euro style nymphs is this Coq de Leon. And um, this stuff lasts a long time. So I'm just going to grab about four or five fibers here. I'm just going to strip them right off the stem. I'm going to try to keep those tips as lined as possible. And our tail is going to be about the length of the hook shank, I like to keep it um, about the back of the bead to the um, bend itself. So I'm just going to take a couple nice wraps here. Then I'm going to take one wrap underneath all my tails. And what that's going to do is just kind of help it kind of stay um, a little propped up uh, straight off the back of the shank. So I'm just going to bring my my uh, thread forward to the back of that lead. I'm just going to come in with my scissors, just cut out those little butt sections from my tailing. Now all I'm going to do now is I'm just kind of building this little ramp up a bit. Um, what that's going to do is it's going to make it a lot easier for me to palmer this quill body in. So I'm just kind of making a tapered body, nice and smooth. As you can see, it starts relatively thin and gets uh, to about the diameter of the lead-free wire we have in there. So now I'm going to tie in my peacock quill. Now you can buy these quills or you can do them yourself. I personally like to do them myself just because um, they're kind of hard to find around here. So I just um, strip them myself. And there's a couple different methods you can use to uh, strip these. You can use the um, bleach mixed with uh, water. Um, I can leave a link in the description if you guys are interested, um, if you want to check that out. It's just pretty much one part bleach, three parts water. Uh, you put them in there and you shake it up and all the fine fibers kind of, the bleach kind of ease away at them. And uh, after that you just wash it, uh, put it in cold water with uh, some baking powder and that's one method. The other method I like to use, if I'm just doing a couple, all I use is one of these erasers. And all I do is I just put it flat on like my tying bench, then I'll just stroke um, against the fibers. So you're pretty much just stripping them off. And um, it doesn't hurt the cool or anything like that. And it's a good quick way um, if you don't want to uh, screw up the other way with the bleach because um, if you leave them in too long, you can kind of over bleach them and they get really uh, brittle. Uh, so this is kind of the safe way. Just a little uh, pencil eraser and you just uh, kind of brush all the fine fibers off. So we're just gonna take this quill here. I'm just going to bring it back a little bit more. It's my thread phrase. 
just like so. Now we're just going to make some nice touching wraps up this body. Now you can be really careful with this because these are um, pretty delicate and uh, they rip pretty easy. So I'm just going to make some nice touching turns up this body. Now when you are putting these in you don't want to overlay them or you don't want them to have a gap in between. You want them just touching and um, it does take a little bit of practice and a little bit of patience um, but I think that they look awesome once you get them done and I think it's worth the time to put into it. So all I'm going to do is just bring this up. You can use hackle pliers. I like to use my fingers just because I have more uh, more feel and I can keep this quill flat. So my fingers are kind of in the frame right now but you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So I'm just barely touching these wraps up. Once I get up to about a half the length of a bead behind the back of that bead, I'm just going to tie it right off. Come in with my scissors, snip that little extra out. Now what I'm going to do is just do a quick little whip finish because when I put this um, UV curing epoxy on here, I want to be able to spin it around just like so. So if I have my thread on there, then um, it's going to be in the way. So I just do a quick little whip finish there and uh, I'm ready to put my uh, UV curing on. So for the bodies I like to use this Loon Outdoors UV Clear Fly Finish. This is just in a thin and you don't need a lot on here you just want to put a little kind of glob on the top there. Then I'm just going to grab my bodkin and kind of just move this all around the bottom, the sides, you just want a kind of a clear thin coat. This is going to protect that quill so when you get a fish it's not going to rip apart on you as well as it's going to magnify this quill a little bit so it looks a lot more segmented. So I'm just going to put another little dot just on the bottom side of this. Just like so. I'm just going to come in with that block in and just kind of sp spread it all out, just like so. Now I'm going to come in with my light, just hit that for a nice 15 seconds or so. As you can see, I'm kind of moving my um, vise around here. And that's just to get all angles of the UV uh, resin. And if I had my thread on there, it would be tangled up and uh, it could even slide back and slide all that uh, stuff off. So I just like to do that quick little whip finish there. So now once that's done, you can just come back in with your thread. Get a couple wraps in there, make sure it's secure. Then you can come in with your scissors and just cut out that tag end off. Now for the collar, I'm just going to be using some natural hair's ear. I just uh, cut this off a, um, a hair's mask. And the easiest way I like to put it in, uh, you can just dub it right onto the, uh, the thread. But what I like to do is actually just give my bobbin a clockwise spin here, counterclockwise, sorry. And what that's going to do is it's going to flatten out your thread. Then you're just going to grab your bodkin here. And you can actually stick it in between your thread there. As you can see, I have it directly down the middle of my thread. All I'm going to do is kind of put my finger in there, hold that. Then I'm going to grab my dubbing here. And you don't need a lot for this. And I'm actually just going to touch dub some dubbing in between those two threads I've split apart. 
and you can make this as sparse as you want or as bulky and buggy as you want. I like to keep it right around the midpoint. So that once I get all my dubbing in there, I just take my finger out and it closes. Now I'm just going to take a clockwise spin. And that's going to cord up all that um, dubbing in between the two uh, fibers. So once I have that, I'm just going to pull it up a bit. Just kind of pull off the excess stuff that didn't really get caught up in there. It's easier to take it out now than to brush it out after. Just like so. Now I'm just going to start making my wraps. So I'm just going to make my wrap and I'm just going to kind of pull it back so it goes in that general direction. Now I'm just going to grab my whip finish tool. I put one little four or five turn whip finish in and I'll just do another one. Just because I'm going to be fishing these down near um, rocks and stuff like that, so uh, last thing I need is one of these whip finishes to uh, fray on me. So there you have it. You can kind of just pick this out after. You can change out the dubbing. You can put um, any color you want. You can use synthetic. You can use ice dub. Uh, this is just my go-to. This one and an olive color. So hopefully today's video, guys. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. If you have any questions about any of the materials or anything like that, just drop it down in the comments. Thanks a lot again for watching, and we will see you in the next one.